not lots of 15 year old girls want to be academics. Lots of people think academics are just old white men sitting and writing lots of books. But if I'm interested in it, then why can't I do it? Why can't I be the next great academic? Why can't I solve the world's next big problem? When you get old, the world has to be a better place because you were in it. My mother was certainly determined to encourage what she calls my natural sense of independence and authority. I was the eldest of four siblings and she certainly did not uh, stop me from being the boss. What I like about acting is the idea that you can sort of step into someone's life. You, you can't even imagine ever living. I didn't always want to be an actor. I thought I would be I thought I wanted to be a translator at the UN and, uh, <laughs> and help people understand each other. I escaped from North Korea. When I was very little, my mom was telling me the birds and mice even can hear you, even though these words have ears. And whatever I say, they will listen. So don't even whisper and don't even think. Not that I'm fearless, it's that I'd never allow my fear to stop me. Couldn't get a job as an anchor or reporter in the US because I just didn't fit the part. And in 1983, you had to fit the part. You had to be blonde, you had to be blue eyed, you had to, you know, have perfect teeth. You know, it does not matter what you look like. You know, if you love this, even in anything, if you love soccer, if you love tennis, you know, if, if it's something that you love, you have to go for it and you have to believe in yourself. I think I never wanted to look the same as everybody else putting your own stamp, putting your own mark on something and, and being an individual. And I think that's what London has is great individuality. You go to other countries in Europe where everybody looks incredibly chic, but they look the same. Three years ago, I was running around on a pitch by myself with my dog, and that's how I trained. Now, our men's team and our women's team, where I play, are pretty much the same apart from how much we get paid. Yep. Yeah, I'm the youngest MP since ever, I think, since it was 1707 the union started, so not that I'm counting, you know. <laughs> You're on the outer ridge, the outer rim, and you think, I'm so far from the centre, look at it over there, and actually you just turn a corner and you're in. I wanted a telescope, it's something I, was, I really desired, but we didn't have much money, and I saw in a magazine an evening class, and it was telescope making, and I thought, telescope making, you can just go make your own telescope. I started learning how to code and I was really excited about it and wanted to share what I was learning and wanted to get more girls excited about, about computer sciences. I certainly didn't go to business school because I'm dyslexic, horribly dyslexic. I couldn't follow a formulae, I couldn't read it as it was written down, so I would memorize it. I was working as a graphic designer, I was at my desk and all of these emails were coming in and I was just bawling and my coworkers were looking at me saying, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, my video's going viral. And 11 million views later, <laughs> it really catapulted my career. I made a proposition and I said, how about you advance me my wedding money? I can invest in my profession, and then when I get married, I will have enough money to pay for my own wedding. It was cameras over men. <laughs> I fell in so many times from climbing, especially when you're doing something that's at your limit, but that's what makes it so special <laughs> when you get to the top. How do you do it? You just start. You have to begin, and it won't be perfect, and it'll be messy, and it'll be hard, but you're doing something, and you're on your way.